The Workplace Safety and Health Risk Management Regulations requires risk management to be implemented in workplaces. Those responsible include employers, self-employed persons and principals. Before work can begin, risk management must be done. It starts with identifying risks in work areas. After that, measures must be taken to eliminate or reduce the risks. Everyone involved in the work must know about the risks and the measures taken. In the new safety and health landscape, risk management is critical as it helps to reduce workplace risks at source. In this video, we'll show you how risk management can apply to an example. Paint work in a confined space. Risk management is a six-step process, starting with preparation. Step 1. Form a multidisciplinary risk assessment team. The team must gather all relevant safety information pertaining to the task at hand. Step 2. Look at what hazards a worker is exposed to when working in a confined space. In our example, possible hazards may include oxygen deficiency, inadequate lighting, and falling hazard. Step 3. Determine the risk level of these identified hazards based on two factors, the likelihood of an accident occurring as a result of the hazards, and the severity of the accident if it happens. Step 4. Decide which risk control measures to take so as to eliminate or reduce the risks. For a confined space, controls may include elimination, which involves covering up of the lighting hose with metal strips to prevent falling hazards, substitution, which replaces toxic paints with non-toxic paints for spray painting works to reduce the risk of fires, engineering control, which uses a mechanical ventilation system, Administrative control, which involves four possible areas. 1. Implementing safe work procedures such as an entry permit. 2. Performing bomb tests using the gas detector. 3. Have a second person keep watch outside the confined space. 4. Gas test the atmosphere before entering. Finally, the use of personal protective equipment as a control measure. This involves selecting and using appropriate safety boots, helmet and breathing apparatus. Rescue equipment must be on standby for emergencies. With risk control measures implemented, the likelihood of the accident occurring is lowered from frequent to occasional or remote. This in turn reduces the risk from high risk to medium or even low risk. Step 5 of risk management involves keeping proper records. Details recorded include identified hazards, risks, existing control measures, implementation schedule, action officers and follow-up dates. The last but most important step 6 is about implementation and communication. Everyone exposed to the risks must be informed of the nature of risks and how they can work safely. Failure to implement risk management carries a maximum fine of $20,000 and or 12 months jail. To help small and medium enterprises get started on risk management, the Ministry of Manpower has set aside a risk management assistance fund. Companies with 200 or less employees are eligible and can get started by sending at least two supervisory staff for a risk management course. Interested companies can get more information from the Ministry of Manpower website at www.mom.gov.sg and get in touch with the listed Risk Management Assistance Fund agents for help.